Okay, welcome back to Bounce Around Charleston. I have a wonderful historian here with me, one of my very best friends, the Reverend Dr. George E. McCain of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, and he's a general officer, and he's going to give us some history about African Methodism. Welcome to Bounce Around Charleston, Reverend McCain. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So glad to be here. Well, so Reverend McCain, I am a part of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. You are a part of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. Tell us about the difference. Uh, the difference, Randolph, is very basic, so similar, but very basic, and most people don't even know that there is a difference. But the reality is that in Philadelphia, uh, some people that were worshiping at St. George's Methodist Church, uh, down their knees, their knees praying, and all of a sudden some consternation arose, and they tried to raise them up off their knees. And Absalom Jones and Richard Allen and others led them out and began a new movement working toward the Free African Society. Similar, a few years later, the same thing, something similar happened. Uh, slaves worshiping with their masters, slaves in the balcony. If there was time for them to come to the altar to pray, they let them come to the altar to pray. If there was communion left, they'd give them the communion. If not, you just didn't get any. So their worship was not complete, yet they were learning and yearning for a relationship with God. And so just as they started in Philadelphia, Free African Society became the African Methodist Episcopal Church, just a few, I guess an hour ahead of them in New York. The same thing happened with slaves coming out of the St. John Methodist Church, which is down in the Wall Street area now, still a cobblestone street because of the historic nature. Can you imagine that? Wall Street, Twin Towers, and all that historic financial stuff, and this little cobblestone street, John Street Methodist Church is still there, and that's where we were founded. And we started also an African Methodist Episcopal group because we came out of the Methodist Church. We were Africans, come from slavery. But then they found that there was another group. They added Zion to our name to distinguish the two. Zion chosen because Zion is the word used most often in the Bible referring to the city of God. So therefore you have it, African Methodist Episcopal, African Methodist Episcopal Zion. And throughout the land, and as we're on five continents, you're on six, the reality is that God continues to do a great work for us and through us in kingdom building. Wow, what a powerful story. And now, okay, it appeared to me that there was a point in time when the church was was ran by men, but now we do have women. My, 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 yes. From the days of a James Varick and a Richard Allen, and on your side, you had Daniel Payne, Morris Brown, and some others, but then there, there rose up a girl in the crowd on your side of the street named Jarena Lee, a girl on our side of the street named Julia Foote, and these women had spiritual gifts. They were able to teach, understand, and relate to people helping nurture disciples and in your church, Jarena Lee, first woman, female, uh, ordained minister in our church, Julia Foote, the same thing. And so, yes, women rose then, and it's, it's amazing because not only did they rise to be preachers, but as later years would come, we saw first in the United Methodist Church, Bishop Leontine Kelly uh, out in California was elected and consecrated bishop, and then it happened to us. But it started again with you first in 2000, when the Vashti McKenzie, <laughs> yeah. Vashti Murphy McKenzie, uh, was elected bishop in the AME church. It took us eight more years, but in Atlanta, Georgia in 2008, Bishop Mildred Bonnie Hines was elected um, a bishop in the AME Zion church. And so yes, women have had a powerful ministry and it's not second place, it's not the back pew, but in ranks of leadership. And with all the female bishops that you have and have had, you just buried one and you've retired one, but yet you're retired two now. But the reality is God is doing great things in men and women to the African Methodist movement. Well, tell me something. Um, what does the AME and all of these stand for? African Methodist Episcopal, African Methodist Episcopal Zion, all is about freedom and liberation. There's a third historic, historically Black Methodist Church, the CME Church, Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. At one time, they were the colored Methodist Episcopal Church until late in the 60s, I believe, 1960s, their name was changed to Christian from the colored Methodist Episcopal, today they're the Christian Methodist Episcopal. And all three were about freedom and liberation for the experience of those who believed in the Methodist doctrine, mainly because they'd been indoctrinated by worshiping with their masters, but then appreciated who God became for them in a methodical 
manner of learning and being made to be disciples of Jesus Christ. And so where are these, okay, you talked about uh, how many churches and we have in our, uh, in our Zions and our, our churches. So where are a lot of these churches located? Located all over the world. And it's amazing because there, there are some spots where one denomination could be much stronger than the other. You know, I, I talk about us being the Freedom Church and, you know, I couldn't talk about the Freedom Church without talking about Harriet Tubman being Amy Zion, Frederick Douglass being Amy Zion, go to Paul Robeson. A lot of people talk about Martin Luther King, who was a Baptist preacher, but don't realize, don't forget, Bernice says he was because his wife was. In other words, don't forget <laughs> And Coretta was an AME Zion church girl out of Alabama, whose father was AME Zion pastor and whose brother just died. Obi Scott presided over the district in Alabama for 30 years as a presiding elder. And so we begin to talk about how and why and where they are. I said all that to say, when I came from New Jersey, I was in North Carolina working at Livingstone College. The bishop sent me to pass. And I said, I don't know if I want to pass or leave higher education. He said, I know your heart, McCain. He says, but if you go four weeks and preach for me until I can find another one. And in those four weeks, God confirmed, confirmed for me it was my, his will for me to pastor and the hearts of the people just broke into me. But when I got to South Carolina, I was in Somerville, the low country. You know where that is, Miller. And I yes. was amazed that here I am in the heart of Methodism. I see all these Methodists and South Carolina is unique because South Carolina, I believe, has the largest population of Blacks in the United Methodist Church but definitely you can't go anywhere without the super seventh of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the AME. You want to be elected dog catcher in the AME Church, you got to come through South Carolina. And so <laughs> Frederick Calhoun James and Mother Teresa until you're very, you're very aggressive and just super, super programming uh, for intergenerational ministry. What Bishop Samuel Green is doing now is phenomenal. But I was there all alone. South of Columbia, we had no other AME Zion churches. I spoke for a district meeting, Charleston District, presiding elder at that time, Alonzo Middleton, and Pastor Josh Gasson. And when I finished speaking that day, he said, McCain, come here, young man. You need to meet Randy. Well, I didn't know who Randy was, but then I found out. Randolph Miller, that's you, you know. <laughs> God put us together from 1987 as a circle of accountability, as a system of support. We would not have been able to build the AME Zion Church there in Somerville to what it became in my 15 years had it not been for the, the relationship and the support of you and presiding elder Middleton. I remember I hosted a national convention a year after I got there in Charleston, because of course the hotels in Somerville and they were flying and busting and everybody coming to this big convention. And I had no help. A few people at Bomb Simple, were, they were excited, prepared, but they were scared. Like they never experienced anything like that. But it was the tenacity and the faithfulness of leaders like you joined together because of our Methodist bond that helped make us welcome and make us successful in our coming there for that meeting. And so I, 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 there's, there's just something about it. And again, even with our schooling, our, our, our working to build schools, you, I look at what, we had two presiding elders started in South Carolina, Clinton Institute in Rock Hill. It then became Clinton Junior College. It is now Clinton College, just graduated their first four year uh, degree recipients there in Rock Hill. And I, I look and I said, look what Bishop Green is doing at Allen. Allen was there on that corner across from Bandit, right up the street from USC. And some people could pass by that corner and harden his wave. But the reality was the pride and the commitment of Bishop Green picked up what the, the, the elders left. And now for what is being done at Allen, what's being done at Livingstone and Salisbury, taking it to the next level. And for the program, mm -hmm. not just for Allen, but with the Institute of the Seminary now, there at, I'm just blown away with phenomenal works that together we can build. And again, if it had not been for you and Elder Alonzo Milton, we never would have accomplished with African Methodists, with, with AME, Amy Zion. As we taught, we understood we are one. And I thank God for what the, the doctrine, the legacy can do and will do, is doing now to build people uh, for a better tomorrow. Well, Reverend Dr. Georgie McCain, I would like to say thank you for being on Bounce Around Charleston and sharing a wonderful Black history moment for African Methodism. But now, Dr. Miller, before we go, let's share one thing that is a providential, God-sent, directed, <laughs> some people say joke. Nobody wants to believe it, but when we talk about our legacy and relationship from 1987 until now, 2022, it is amazing that Bishop Mildred Bonnie Hines, 
Yes, sir. Bishop Kenneth Monroe would send me to Greater Unity AME Zion Church in Sharon, South Carolina, up in the heart of York County, Northern South Carolina, and then Bishop Sanders Green send you, my, 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 the Greater Unity AME Church. <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you want to talk about unity in the place, there's no greater unity than the bond that AMEs have from Holly Hill than what the AME Zion have in Sharon, South Carolina. When you talk about greater unity, that means unity at another level. AME and AME Zion. My brother, I thank you for this opportunity and we look forward to sharing again. You heard it all right here on Bounce Around Charleston. And we'll be right back after this break.